it was just about three months ago when I purchased three more Asian arowana from my local fish store, one fish, two fish. Now being a 2,000 gallon aquarium, of course a dream for me would be to have an Asian arowana community as well as freshwater stingrays. And I was well on my way. We have five freshwater stingrays in there right now as well as at first we only had one Asian arowana. Of course, an Asian arowana community is cost prohibitive, but I got a really good deal on the remaining three, so I had to get them. What's up guys? <laughs> now a real issue with an Asian arowana community is the fact that you're probably always going to have fish with torn fins and they're always gonna kind of look beat up because Asian arowana tend to be pretty territorial. So a lot of the times you want to add in seven or more and cram them into a relatively small tank, which tends to diffuse aggression, but the arowana still look kind of terrible. So adding only four to a 2000 gallon aquarium was a bit risky. However, over the past couple of months, I've actually had great success. All of the initial fighting that they did subsided and they started getting along fantastically. You see, this all went great until I left for a few days. You see, being so small in such a large aquarium and having success initially means that long term, I'm probably going to have success. All I got to do is keep them well fed. If I don't, all hell could possibly break loose and that's kind of what happened while I was gone this past weekend. Now these guys are kind of just soaking around over in the corner right now. I just fed them and I was just messing around with the water flows and lots of lights on the tank so they're kind of stressed out right now. However, you can see that they will get along just fine if they're well fed. But like I said, they didn't eat while I was gone so as soon as I got home, I fed them. So of course over the next few weeks, these guys are gonna heal back up, their fins will go back to normal, and I'm really excited about the fact that they're simply getting along. But a true before and after, you need some differences. But with Asian arowana, they take years to mature and get their coloration. Their coloration, like all fish, are based on a number of factors though. First and foremost, genetics. There's, you can only feed or put a fish in a certain environment, but they're only going to get so far depending on what type of genetics they have. For example, Frank isn't the best looking flower horn, so he probably has some pretty poor genetics in him. However, he's probably got the best personality in this entire gallery, and that's why I love him, and I think many of you guys love him. However, if this guy was bred for his chins, he's a champion. He's got seven. My fat little Frank. So of course genetics is going to play a role in how your fish look and but again there's there's nothing you could do about that after you purchase the fish of course when it comes to asian arowana you can make sure that you purchase from a reputable farm but there's other factors that we can have an effect on in terms of their coloration so for example when i feed my discus i want their reds and oranges to come through far more and i can have a direct impact on that with their diet so when i make their food i ensure i include things like paprika and astaxanthin, or however you pronounce that, you get the idea. That's certainly going to bring out a lot of the reds, but when it comes to herbivores, like for example, some African cichlids, one of the things you kind of want to focus on here is feeding them a vegetable date based diet like spirulina, which can help intensify their colors as well. So of course their genetics and diet are going to play a massive role in the overall coloration of their fish, but the environment we put them in 
has an even bigger impact, believe it or not. Of course you want your fish to be happy. We need perimeters to be ideal for the fish. And at the very least, you wanna make sure there's no ammonia or nitrites uh, present. Nitrates are fine. We're gonna do our water changes, remove the nitrates as well as dissolved organics. But this just ensures that the fish is happy and healthy. Now we've gone over the next thing immensely in the past. The actual layout of the aquarium. If you look at my angels, we have a very high contrast with this fish. They look like they're standing out tremendously. I mean, check it out. With that said, some fish react differently to different colors of backgrounds. The darker the background, a lot of fish will tend to try to camouflage in with it, darkening their color. Now with some fish, you kind of don't want that, so you'll go with a lighter color. And again, this just comes all comes back down to their environment. Now, of course, lighting plays a huge role as well. And depending on the color spectrum you're using, the intensity, etc., your fish can look dramatically different depending on what you're using. And that brings up the next point. The one thing that we have no control over, or at least really can't get into our aquariums properly or accurately, is up there somewhere behind the clouds, the sun. Now there, of course, there are a ton of lights like these ones here that truly can replicate sunlight and even grow plants as well as coral and look absolutely amazing. However, there's one thing that they won't do and that's tan your fish. Yes, tanning your fish, which is extremely common with Asian arowana. Now, when you look at a lot of red arowana and you see that truly deep, rich, blood red arowana coloration, you think, well, that's just great genetics and a great diet. And of course, genetics and uh, their environment and everything plays a role but they don't get to that coloration without actually tanning them, which brings up the point of how do you get all of your arowana to kind of look their best? Now, when it comes to blue base crossbacks or really golds in general, you kind of want to put them in something called white tank treatment. It's a bare, completely white painted tank with a low water level. This ensures that the fish tries to blend into this white background, which enhances its gold coloration. And then when you put it in a darker tank, it tries to darken up and all of that gold and blue truly shines through and they look absolutely stunning. This doesn't work on a red arowana. We look towards tanning. But how do you tan an arowana? Well, the same thing that actually tans us, the UVA and UVB rays. Now, some Asian arowana keepers, when they are grooming their arowanas, try to put them out in outdoor facilities. And that's a lot of times, again, why you see, uh, if you've ever seen Asian arowana being farmed, they'll be in outdoor ponds, which is ideal for breeding. However, they'll always look absolutely stunning. That's simply because they're exposed to the UVB uh, and UVA rays. How can we replicate this in the home aquarium, though? Well, with simple light bulbs. This is a Repti Sun UVB 10.0 light. The 10.0 means 10% UVB, 30% UVA. The problem with these though, is that uh, it's difficult to penetrate water as well as glass or acrylic. And now I'm using 1.6 inch thick acrylic on this aquarium, so it's gonna be hard to penetrate. Plus it's four feet deep. Again, difficult to penetrate that water surface. None of this is sponsored by the way. Uh, it's just a, simply a bulb that works for tanning. So we can simply keep the aquarium open top and put a bunch of these lights over top of it, starting off the tanning process slowly for a couple of hours a day for you know a couple of weeks, slowly increasing it to say 12 hours a day and even some go pretty dramatic and goes tanning 24 hours a day. In my opinion, this will cause too much stress to the fish and potentially stop it from eating. It could become lethargic or dash around the aquarium hurting itself. Ideally, you don't want to exceed 12 hours a day, which still is gonna cause a tremendous amount of algae. But again, the grooming process isn't pretty. I just wanna bring you along and give you an insight to it because when you see the end result of an absolutely stunning Asian arowana, that is tends to be five years of intense grooming on that fish. So putting these little bulbs over top of the aquarium is, a, is kind of a good idea, but we're really only tanning the top of the fish, which tends not to matter as much because we see the Asian arowanas from the sides. So of course I could figure out a way to kind of mount these to the sides of the aquarium, which is uh, lined up with where the Asian arowana typically swim. And I just go the entire length on both sides. However, penetrating this 1.6 inch thick acrylic, I'm not gonna get all of the UVB rays through it simply because the UVB doesn't travel as far as UVA. 
So it's not going to be really effective. But that doesn't mean these types of bulbs don't work. I just have to create some sort of an underwater housing. Now there are Asian arowana tanning bulbs that you could put inside your aquariums to tan them. But I'm not sure if I'm going to actually tan these guys because this aquarium's always on video. We're always showing it and always talking it, about it. And I know that every video moving forward, I'm gonna have to explain why there's bulbs inside the aquarium. And I know that's just gonna get frustrating for myself as well as you guys. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. But what could I use these bulbs for? Could you use them to tan your fish? And the simple answer is yes. You see, Frank is a flower horn and he might not be the best looking flower horn and there's only so much I could do about it. However, tanning him can certainly intensify the red within him. So if I flick on one of these lights, it doesn't look like it's doing much to the fish. Uh, it just looks like a natural light bulb, but it is emitting UVA and UVB lights. He spends most of his time up near the top. so. That is ideal over time, three to six months. Uh, he definitely turned bright red. But will I actually do it? No, but why not? Is it unnatural? Not really. This is happening in the wild, of course. And that's why a lot of the times wild caught fish look tremendously better than tank raised. And I know many people will be offended and think it's unnatural and cruel. And I understand I will probably see you someday out there with an umbrella over a stream, making sure the fish are protected by these rays. I'm kidding, but you get the idea. This isn't something that's unnatural, but Doing it in the aquarium for long periods of time uh, can potentially cause a lot of stress to the fish. Uh, and I might not get the results that I'm looking for with the types of bulbs that I have, unless I truly kind of deconstruct this aquarium and have bulbs on the inside all over the place, which in my opinion kind of takes away from it. I think I'm just going to let them naturally uh, progress over time. Otherwise, if I wanted to do it properly, I'd take them out and have them in individual aquariums. I'd groom them properly, uh, and it's just going to be next to impossible in this tank. And in the meantime, I'm just going to have an ugly looking aquarium. So am I going to do it? Absolutely not. Is it something that you should do? Probably not, but it's up to you if you want to do it. It can cause damages to your fish if abused. Uh, and even yourself, if you know, looking into the light for long periods of time, of course, it could potentially cause damages to your eyes. But whether or not I'll be tanning my fish has been a question that I keep getting repetitively, so I only, didn't want to only cover it, but I kind of wanted to go over uh, some information of it as well, so we don't have to come back to it. With all of that said, I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on uh, tanning your fish or what you think the best methods for improving the coloration of your fish or getting the most out of your fish are. Do you feel like it's diet, environmental factors? Do you feel like we're simply missing out on the UVB and UVA rays of the sun? Or is it something else? In the comment section below, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and what you have had success with because a lot of the times the comment section is simply the second half of the video and I know a lot of people learn even more from there. Anyways guys, I have a busy week ahead of me so I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'd also like to thank you for watching. And if you join me in a couple days on Thursday, I will have a new video for you.